Lowell and Bonnie. Bonnie from Cutbank. It's good to have you guys with us. And I said, they're throwing you under the bus over here, girlfriend. <laughs> and you are? Amy, good to have you with us. <laughs> say that they never warn you when you come. They just say, come hang out with us. And we're not like, we're not your mama's church. So we'll. <laughs> uh, anybody else? All right. Just a couple of announcements. Fry bread this Thursday at 6 o'clock. Come join Pastor Bruce and the crew. And we did a water baptism last week. Michael Mo Owen. <laughs> Good job. <Thank> you. <laughs> it's exciting to see him get lit up and on fire. And if mom's watching... You better turn around and wave to mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, cowboy, you are on, buddy. All right, no interpreters, so we can do this fast. <laughs> no. I'm kind of getting used to that speed now, so... All right, please join me in our set free pledge. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up till I stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I drop, preach to all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen? <coughs> You bow your heads with me. We're going to bring you tonight's offering. Father God, we are just truly blessed as we gather. We gather in your name. As we begin to worship this evening, Lord, just tune us. Get us closer to you. <clears throat> Fire us up. We just ask the Holy Spirit to just dwell in us richly. And may we just pay attention to him as he speaks to us this evening. So, Father God, we just want to again thank you. Thank you for where you have us right now, knowing that you are with us. We praise you. We're going to honor you. We're going to give you all the glory, Lord, as we give, as we serve, as we love on others. And we do this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Does everybody stand to our feet to get ready to worship? Amen.
Your name. 
at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your name is the name above every name, Father God. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. That, Lord, that there no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. For there is power in the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus... Lord, the demons tremble and they fear, Father God. We thank you that you have made us more than conquerors, Father God. We thank you for the blood that cleanses us and makes us whole, Father God. We thank you for your blood, Father God, that makes us righteousness. We thank you for the death on the cross, Lord, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind, Father God. Lord, the that we do not do the same things that we used to do, Father God. Lord, we repent even tonight, Father God. Lord, that you would create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us, Father God. Lord, though the world around us crumbles and falls, Father God, we stand solid on a solid rock. That in the name of Jesus, Father God, demons tremble in fear, Father. Lord, we thank you that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, event, but against Amen. principalities and powers of darkness, Father God. But Lord, you said to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as we take up the armor of God, Lord, we put on the Lord Jesus Christ that no weapon will harm us, Father God, that our feet are standing on solid ground, Father. Lord, have your way. Lord, we declare tonight, Father God, that we're going to receive your word. We're going to apply it to our lives, Father God. And Lord, that we will not leave here the same. Lord, that we will not go out these doors the same as we came. But Lord, that we would go with victory in our hearts. That at the name of Jesus, Father God, all the things around us, all the things that worry us, Father God, we will just fall by the wayside, Father God. But you would be lifted up in this place tonight. And Lord, that your word would be changing and transforming our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Woo. One thing I always just love to hear Norm pray. I don't know about you, but you're a blessed, blessed woman. I said I love to, love to listen to him pray. <laughs> Amen. Well, if you're a visitor, plug your ears, okay? If you say that Set Free is your home church, open your ears. And I only do this once a year. And you'll notice, and let me preface this. As because we just went through all the giving statements, okay? So let me preface this. We are debt-free. We do not need, listen to me, we do not need your money, okay? Uh, people say, what? What do you say? I thought preachers are always asking for money. We don't need your money. God takes care of every need that we have. But going through the giving statements, you guys are cursing yourselves, I'm sorry, put your steel-toed boots on. The tithe is how you're going to get blessed. And again, set free don't need your money. I'm telling you, we're, we're over and above. Everything's paid for. Everything's good. The house is good. The boys are, everything's good. I don't want your money. But it's a relationship between you and God with the tithe. And if you read through the Word and what the Word says... How are we messing with God? How are we getting being cursed? By the tithe. You're not tithing. So I'm just going to just throw this is my annual throw this out at you. I'll give you a three month challenge. My wife cringes every time I do this. <laughs> three months. You faithfully tithe, and at the end of three months, if you're still behind on your bills, JT will pay your bills, not set free. I will pay your bills. Okay? I've never had anybody finish that. I've done this almost every year for 26 years. You will be blessed. 
Now, don't say, I'll take you up on that and then come back at the end of three months and say, you know, you need to pay my bills and you just bought an 80-inch screen TV and an <laughs> iPhone 12 and just went and bought a new car. Eh, that ain't going to work. We're going to walk through a budget and all that stuff. But I'm guaranteeing you, listen to me, I'm guaranteeing you if you will do that, God will bless you. I was talking to somebody tonight. It's not so much about me, but when I give, God wants to give back so I can give more. Listen to this, and I'm, hopefully I'm getting this number right. Lumps will straighten me out if I'm not. Set Free Ministries, Great Falls, Montana, gave $31,000 this year. This place. We tithe, Set Free tithes, every dollar that comes into Set Free, we tithe on that dollar to somewhere else. And the ministry is living proof Amen. that we're blessed. Because, no, I'm not. No, I ain't going to say it. So that's my little jump start for you this year, okay? Again, you're say, don't go home and say, that sucker preacher is asking for money. I'm not asking for your money because, again, 90% of what comes into this, no, probably 95%, what do you say, comes from outside pretty close? 95% of what runs this ministry comes from outside of these four walls. So we are amazingly blessed. And anyway, praise God, pass pizza. Cowboy, come, let's move this dude so we can mess with some, mess with some people. Let's just set him right here. Can we set him here? He's not that heavy. He's just a little awkward. Everybody thinks this is a, a big steel thing of armor, and it's not. As long as he don't fall on my head, we'll be good. <laughs> It'll work. He's good. He's good. Huh? <laughs> so take one guess what we're going to preach on. Norm prayed, and I'm thinking, here we go again. God always lines things up. How many of you, I probably shouldn't bring this up, but I am. How many of you have been in a battle verbally with somebody about politics. Okay? How many of you have lost a friendship over that? Now, that's sad. That is really sad. Family member. We had it. Well, no, I better should have. <laughs> if we can't agree to disagree on politics, then something's haywire with us. Now, am I staunch in my belief? Absolutely. And I'll try to defend my side to the best of my ability. But I don't want to lose a friendship over it. We had somebody this week that they didn't know that they were one side or the other and kind of got into it a little bit and and after it was all over, came back later and says, I hope that doesn't ruin our friendship. And one of them says, why would that? If we're going to lose a friendship over a political view, then something is wrong here. Can you agree with me? you got to love the one that might even just... Now, yeah, just shut up, JT. How do you stand firm in the Lord? Let me get into this. How's that? I found this lesson that I'm just, I'm going to read through it. And I know the ladies are going through um, the armor in the women's Bible study. And I just asked Lumps tonight, I need to steal a book from that. Because I think, and it, see, this is my best preaching buddy that there is. Because he sits here. 
and laughs at me the whole time that I'm preaching. Yes. <laughs> I can get an amen out of him every time I say something. But if we're going to stand firm in the Lord, we've got to suit up with Jesus. Now, we're going to go to Ephesians 6, but I want to read some stuff here to you first. Are you aware that this morning Satan wants to poison your thoughts and emotions away from the purity of God's truth? And it's not so much Satan, but that his demons, enemies are always... How, now, let's be dead honest tonight. How many of you have problems with your thoughts sometimes? I'll pray for the rest of you that you're lying. <laughs> we have problems with our thoughts. You're in comatose if you're not having problems with your thoughts. Okay? So let's just get it out, be honest, get it out on the table that we have problems with our stinking thinking. And the enemy will use that to do one thing, and that is to draw you away from praising and worshiping the Lord. Now, I know for me, I've got a song that I wake up to in the morning. She just shakes her head. But it says, I'm, I'm the army of the Lord. i got to get up in the morning thinking right off the get-go that I'm part of God's army. He's with me, and nothing that's going to come against me unless he allows it to happen. You're going to get tested. Did I just say a bad word? You're going to get tested. Things are going to come at you, and it's a test of the emergency broadcast system. Are you going to stand for Jesus Christ, or are you going to fold and bail? And the biggest thing that we're not doing is we're not in this. I, was telling, I think I was telling T, I was going to go through Acts. I said last week I was going through Acts. I got to praying and dinking around this morning we're putting up a fuel tank and some different things going on and it kept going back to the armor of god armor of god and then so then i went back in the house and read ephesians and i was like holy cow that's some good stuff so i read ephesians again and so can i encourage you guys this week to read ephesians, ephesians because i think that's where we're going but you need to be prepared you need to be girded, you need to be suited, you need to be clothed, you need to be prepared to walk out the door every morning. Now, if some of you have got the alarm clock going off and you're jumping up, grabbing a cup of coffee and running out the door, you're setting yourself up for a crash. And I'm not telling you you need to spend an hour with God in the morning, that'd be awesome if you could. But just try five minutes. Stop for a second. There's a lot of great devotional books, but I would encourage you, take five minutes this week, get in Ephesians. Read through Ephesians. Five minutes. Time's up. Poop. Out the door you go. You know the problem that's going to be, and it's a good problem, is you're going to get in there and you're not going to want to go. Because you're going to want to keep reading. And I'm praying that's what's going to feed your soul, get your mind set on Christ, get your heart planted. And if you're walking in sin, it's going to break that bondage, break that yoke. Hello? The demons never miss church. Some of you are sitting in here thinking, that rotten, no good preacher, he's stepping on my toes. Hello, phone goes off, my man cries, somebody gets up to go to the bathroom, distractions. When we come together, if we get focused on God's word, get focused on what he's saying, and it's not me, the stuff that I'm saying, I'm praying it's that the spirit of God that's speaking through me to you, that you take not everything that I say, but what jumps up at you and what God lightens up in your heart. And that's, guess what? That's for you. Have you ever come to church and you walk out of here thinking, how did JT know I was doing all that stuff? You don't need to raise your hands. Did, I had a, a guy one time, 
Pastor Red was here. Pastor Red prophesied over him. And as he was, pro- he was looking at me like, you've told him everything about my life. And I'm like, dude, I didn't even know you were coming. When God wants to read your mail, he'll read your mail. And the only reason why he wants to do that is so that you'll surrender, you'll quit doing what you're doing, and give it all up to him. And I'm going to have a hard time getting anywhere. I'm not even, I got 19 pages, and I ain't even got off the first paragraph here. I'm going to be in big trouble. I got nine minutes left. I'm doing good. (laughs) All right, here we go. I'm going to try and get through some of this. So, wants to poison your thoughts and emotions away from the purity of God's truth. His attacks center in two areas, your mind and your emotions. Jesus calls Satan the father of lies in John 8, 44, and Jesus warns us that we face the onslaught of the devil in realms of lies versus truth every day. That means to stand for the Lord today, we must. Be on guard for the father of lies. The father of lies wants to snatch the word of God from you. And he not only snatches it, he twists it. So he'll drop just a little good stuff in there, and then he'll add some other stuff that isn't in here, and you think it's truth because you didn't go look. Hello? Did I tell you to wear steel toe boots tonight? Well, that's all right. The father of lies wants you to think that sin, it ain't too bad. My wife just said something that, well, you all know me well enough. Sometimes I just want to throat punch somebody when they say this statement. Now listen to me. They say this statement, God just wants me to be happy. Show me that in here. Now, he wants you to be full of joy, but joy and happiness are two different things. I know of two people that have left their wives and went and got themselves another girlfriend, and their statement is, God just wants me happy. I just want to punch you right in the face and say, let me make you happier than it. You can't, never mind. You are helping, baby. That's good. The father of lies wants you to look, wants you to learn to laugh at sin on television and the movies. I'm, I'll raise both hands on that one. Okay. The father of lies wants to destroy your conscience so that it will no longer warn you. And your conscience is the Holy Spirit. You know, I tell you all the time, Holy Spirit whacks me all the time. And thank God he does. Because God disciplines those he loves, not the ones he hates. The father of lies wants to entertain you with sin so that you won't think it's as evil as sin really is. Let me just play with it a little bit. Now, Let me clarify something, too. A thought is not a sin because the enemy will bombard you with thoughts. The sin comes is when you act on that thought. The father of lies wants to draw you into a sea of sin so that you become very tolerant of it. We just keep doing it over and over, and pretty soon our heart starts to get hard, and pretty soon the Holy Spirit, it gets a little bit... And pretty soon we're just walking in it and we're just, we smell like poop and don't even know it. He wants to fill your mind with doubts, lies, immorality, and false doctrine. He wants to, de- 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 help me out with this word, debilitate, there it is, your will and get you to do things you shouldn't do. He wants to twist your thinking by putting sinful ideas to appealing music. 
And somebody says, well, wait a minute, you're not going to mess with my music, are you? Hmm? What are you listening to? Is it edifying? Is it encouraging you? Is it getting you closer to Jesus? Or are we... Now, there's some head-banging Christian boys, too. If that's your thing, go get the head-banging Christian stuff. If you get the country stuff, we'll pray for you. That was for, that was for Kenny. Kenny says I'm an undercover country guy, so... <laughs> <laughs> he wants to confuse your emotions by corrupting your desires and drawing your affections to the wrong things. So we better get a little scripture here before we get too much farther. Get into Ephesians chapter 6 here. I'm going to be, I don't know, we might be on this for a long time. I'm serious. <laughs> Ephesians 6, let's just start at verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him, and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Now, for you visitors, you're thinking, that does, my Bible doesn't say that. I read out of the Amplified, so it gives a little bit more stuff in here. Verse 11 says, Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Be dressed like this dude. And I always tell everybody, don't run out of the house streaking. You say, well, I'd never go running out of the house naked. If you don't put your armor on in the morning, guess what? You're spiritually streaking. Now, get that image in your mind. Hello? Why would you go running out of the... You're not going to go unless something's wrong with you. You're not going to go running out of the house with no clothes on in the morning. Okay? Why would you go running out of the house without being fully suited with Jesus Christ? Because when the enemy looks at you, if you're suited in Jesus Christ, who does he see? He sees Jesus. He doesn't see me. Thank God for that. Verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. Verse 14, so stand firm. Do you hear this keep standing firm thing? So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. And above all, lift up the protective shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times on every occasion and in every season in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. And pray for me that words may be given to me when I open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of salvation for which I am an ambassador in chains. And pray that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly and courageously as I should. We just need to get up. And I tell some people, and don't raise your hands in here, how many of you have problems 
sleeping at night. How many of you are having nightmares? Don't raise your hands in here. But you get you got mental battles going on in your head at night. I always tell everybody, why don't you go to bed and put the armor on before you go to bed? Especially that helmet of salvation to protect one thing. Your mind. What and I'm the same way. When things are going not right in one area of my life, my mind will take off like a hurricane. And it spins, and then pretty soon I'm like, whoo, a little bit over here. Whoo, and then it gets, and pretty soon I'm in a crisis. And nothing's even happened yet. Hello? Am I speaking to the choir here? And we get up in the morning, we're all Twitter-pated, and God's like, what are you doing, dude? You haven't even stepped out. You haven't even seen that person or walked into that situation yet. I've got it all under. And once I get that up here, and it gets from here to here, I get that peace that surpasses all understanding, and I can walk into almost any circumstance and not get all, although you already heard me, I want to throat punch people, but. Hello? Our mind will, our mind, will, and emotions will. And you can make yourself an emotional wreck. And I know people who, if they don't have a crisis in their life, will go find somebody who's got a crisis to help them with their crisis. Because they got to have a crisis. Hello? I got peace going on right now. Man, I don't have peace. I got to find somebody. I gotta, we got to stir something up here. We got to get things rocking and rolling. I don't know what to do. So do me a favor this week. I didn't get into anything that I really wanted to get into, but that's all right. Read through Ephesians. Take a, do a chapter a day. And then when you're done, go back and then read through it again. And when we come in here next Saturday, there's a whole bunch of life lessons in Ephesians. It's not just, you know, when people say Ephesians, they go immediately to the armor of God. But there's all sorts of good stuff in here. And it'll apply to each and every one of your lives. And if, there's that two-letter cuss word, if, you'll get in here God will start directing you. The Holy Spirit will start speaking to you and giving you wisdom and guidance and encouragement. And he'll kick your rear end when you need it. How, you know, we're all sitting here like we're a bunch of angels sitting around the throne. How many of you know we need to get kicked? Every once in a while, I need a good, a good swift kicking. Hey, Easy. <laughs> but that keeps us what on track and on focus and staying fired for Jesus so I'm just going to ask you just bow your heads tonight and there's some maybe all of us have areas in our life that we're literally battling every day and some of it might be because the sin that you're in. And some of it might be from outside sources. But God wants you to have peace. And first and foremost is we've got to obey what the Word says. And if we'll be obedient to what the Word says, things are going to go a whole lot better for you. So, Father, tonight I just pray for each and every one here. Father, that we learn to suit ourselves up with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Put on that belt of truth. Put the good new shoes on our feet. Take up that shield of faith. And most importantly, we take that offensive weapon, that sh the sword of the Spirit, Father God, and stand on your word. Father, not to do it braggadociously, not to do it arrogantly, not to do it with pride, but to do it with love, honor, and respect. But, Father, we want to defeat the enemy and the lies that he keeps throwing at us. Help us to have a pure thoughts. Help us to speak the word with love and compassion. Help us to hear the, the cries for help from people. Let us have your eyes to see what's going on. 
and especially to have your heart. So, Father, I pray tonight as we're sitting here, if there's somebody that's just struggling, I pray they just repent, Father God, and just get right tonight. And if somebody needs you in their life, Lord Jesus, that they would just drop it all, say, Father, forgive me. I am a sinner, and I need a Savior. And, Father, I pray that they would invite Jesus and the Holy Spirit into their life, ask for forgiveness, repent, and get on the, get into the kingdom of God and just have some fun with the Lord. Lord, you are so amazing, so gracious, so merciful. Help us. Help me to stay focused on you. Holy Spirit, I ask you just to lead us, guide us, comfort us in all that goes on this week. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I love you. Get ready for... Get into Ephesians, okay? All right.